Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchbox Lessons here. My name is Mark Norman. I am the senior pastor at Highland Valley United Methodist Church. Every afternoon, uh, we gather on Thursday just to share what we'll be talking about on Sunday. And we have a very special thing that's going to be happening this Sunday. Uh, my wife, Reverend Natasha Murray, who you see right here, uh, will, we, will, we got a crazy idea that usually in the United Methodist Church on Human Relations Sunday during the King holiday, oftentimes maybe a predominantly Black congregation will do a pulpit swap with a predominantly white congregation. And so since kind of the blessing of being a cross-cultural appointment is that and being a clergy couple, the best of both worlds, we had the idea, well, I had the crazy idea. Yes, I, idea. <laughs> I was about to say, you had the idea. Well, let's do a pulpit swap. I'll be at St. James at 10 o'clock and you come and do worship service here at Highland Valley at 8.30. And so I guess one of the first and things- 11. And 11. Uh, and 11, yes, 8.30 and 11. Right. I did tell you it's two services, right? You, you did. Okay. I don't think I would prepare swap but carry on <laughs> so initially uh just wanted to take a moment to introduce sunday so let's be honest what was your initial thought when i said let's have a pulpit swap on human relations day um i i didn't think it was too crazy i thought it was a, a really good idea um but like you mentioned earlier usually when you do a pulpit swap for human relations sunday um, it's usually um, the pastor of a predominantly Anglo congregation coming to preach at a predominantly Black congregation, and they swap pulpits, um, sharing in each other's cultures, and um, just kind of um, being able to step back, so to speak, and, and be in each other's shoes for that moment, for that Sunday. Um, I, I remember um, that you've done that before, um, preaching and swapping pulpits with other pastors, um, when you served in Little Rock and, you know, that went over really well. Um, I do think that it's a great cultural exchange um, for people to be able to um, step outside of their, their norm for worship on Sunday morning. Um, we know that worship is usually the most segregated time um, of the week, um, if not other times during the week. And I, I do believe that in doing that type of celebration where you have um, a cross-cultural experience, it allows people to be able to see um, and to hear and to listen, but to also feel the spirit of God move in a mighty way, um, to move in a way that is probably different than what they've experienced before, um, and to actually um, be connected because this is a denominational wide celebration of how we should be um, as part of the body of Christ. Um, and so doing that exchange really allows us to really have a glimpse of the kingdom uh, for just that moment, for just that hour on Sunday morning to just see what the kingdom of heaven would look like um, when we all get to heaven. Um, and I think that that's exciting. And that's one one of the many things that I love about being United Methodist is our connection um, that we have with our brothers and sisters, um, no matter where they serve, um, if they're in um, a rural congregation or a suburban congregation or an urban congregation. It just gives us all a, a chance to fellowship and to um, be truly connected. I think uh, one of the key things about doing a form of a pulpit swap is to have an opportunity to hear fresh voices. Now, yeah. Island Valley hears me all the time. You have already preached at our journey worship service and the people at 8, 8 30 and 11 o'clock were actually wondering when uh, they would have an opportunity uh, to hear you. Now, it's nothing exciting for St. James uh, because I served there uh, for a year and was a DS. So they're just going to hear the um, same old crazy singing Mark. But I just think the ability to um, hear your voice and your, your perspective um, and the way that you engage the word uh, is the kind of difference that Human Relations Sunday is about. It's about being able to tap in to other places that we don't usually tap into. 
And I, yeah. I know you're going to be a blessing at Highland Valley. So um, just one one quick question. Um, our lunchbox lessons, it used to be about a 15, 20 minute thing. And so I've concised it down to five just to give people a, a tidbit of what will be happening Sunday. Um, so um, the question um, was written, I mean, the, this book was written by Dr. King himself, who asked this question, where do we go from here, mm -hmm. chaos or community? Mm -hmm. um, and I am wondering from where you are um, in life right now, where do you see chaos in our world and where do you see community? Wow, that's a that's a really good question. I believe that um, out of chaos there comes order, um, and from that order there builds community. So I feel that in in order to establish um, anything, you know, especially when you hear um, at the very beginning in Genesis and how the world was created and how God ordered the chaos into this beauty. Um, I get emotional because I feel that in the midst of the chaos that we're experiencing in the United, in the United Methodist Church, um, and not just in the United Methodist Church, but in our in our cities, in our counties, in our state, um, and just in our nation and around the world, there is there is chaos. But I I believe in God's unending grace. I believe in um, God's hope for the world to be reconciled um, back to God uh, through the power of his son, Jesus Christ, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I do believe that in the midst of this chaos, there will become something beautiful in the beloved community. Um, I just, I have faith in that. I have faith in that. I know that um, it's an ongoing work. You know, it's not like you can do the work and then stick a pin in it and we're done and we've hit this mile marker. But I believe it's an ongoing work, just like sanctification. It is ongoing. It is throughout our entire life. Um, and it doesn't stop. Um, I believe that in the midst of chaos, there is there is there are moments where we need to pause and see God at work in each other and as well as ourselves. Um, so I, I truly believe that. I believe that we have to have some type of chaotic uh, clamoring um, to draw our attention and to help us to just really dig in and lean further into the work that God is doing through us um, and also using us to go out into the world um, to form places of community where there is chaos. Um, so I see that. I see that um, not just in my congregation, not just in the area that I serve, but I see that and I'm hopeful for that for the entire world um, to experience um, moving forward from the chaos to moving into a place of community that is full of love, that is full of grace, um, but that is full of growth and accountability. You know, you can't just have this community and there not be accountability. Because then that is further chaotic. Um, uh, and further perpetuates chaotic. chaos instead of... Exactly, exactly. So you have to have order. So I believe chaos, order, community, um, it all kind of goes together, but it's not, there's never a stopping point. It's ongoing. It's 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 throughout our entire life that we have to work to achieve and and make that as a, as a point of progression for all of us. Okay. Well, um, let me be careful because... You know, I'm notorious for trying to do mansplaining from time to time. Not as often as many people, but I, I'm learning to catch myself. There's, there's a little you on my shoulder. So I must ask this question. Um, is it kind of a continuum that with with that all three of these components are, are all at work building uh, in order to create? each other I mean you have to have that chaotic moment I, I think about the Buffalo Bills um safety um yeah. that when he collapsed on the floor that that put a pause on yeah. everything right. and out of that chaos created the beautiful scenes of uh play opponents um kneeling and praying uh or it, it, it actually created unity um because in the midst of that chaos that was happening on the field um, you know, you heard about reports where the players of both teams actually came together 
and created a human wall to provide um, privacy for um, the paramedics and the trainers and all of those who were working to resuscitate um, uh, Damar Hamlin um, during his collapse. And so I, I truly feel that that is an example of chaos, order, and then community, because you had so many people um, to rally behind um, uh, Damar, and you also had um, new voices that came up front and talked about, you know, the long-term um, care that would be needed, and even calling out um, the NFL on its um, practices of health and um, not just physical health, but mental health um, for the players and long-term care for those players after they leave the league. And, you know, as a fan and as a person who is a part of a fantasy with football league, even though my team is horrible, <laughs> <laughs> you still find that um, the compassion that former players have and, you know, that it's more than just our entertainment. You know, I think that that was, that was a really um, truly impactful realization for a lot of people that in the midst of the chaos of this, this play that happened and a player on the ground, um, there was a sense of order, but then there's also a sense of community where people now have a, a heightened understanding that these players' lives are truly on the line every single week when they step out onto the field. And I think the the danger of that became real and evident for many of us, um, you know, to where it's no longer about the points that you may score in your fantasy league. It's no longer about getting that jersey and supporting that player. It's no longer about the negotiations of the contracts. Um, but now there's a sense of community that has come together to hold the owners and the league accountable for their actions so that players can get the treatments that they need um, and also to have the um, financial support that they need for their long-term medical care um, for themselves and for their families. So I, I believe that in the midst of chaos, something beautiful can emerge. And we have definitely seen that um, happening last week um, with that situation with Damar Hamlin and the Buffalo Bills and the, and the um, Cincinnati Bengals. Well, Reverend Murray, thank you so much for this moment to be together. And thank you uh, once again for uh, coming and blessing us here at Highland Valley uh, at 8.30 and 11 o'clock with the mighty word from you. And thank you for opening up uh, your pulpit uh, to me. And I'm just not going to know um, how to act to kind of uh, sleep in. Um, not <laughs> sleep in much because I'm going to have to leave it. Right, right, right. So maybe there's I mean, no sleeping in at all. So well, I mean, there's a little, little bit of sleeping in. I mean, but you do have that travel back and forth. But um, I know that God will be with you, and I know that the people of St. James are are extremely excited about um you bringing the word, um, and they are just excited for you to share your gift of love and ministry um that you have for them, um, and so for that, I am truly, truly thankful. And just just one more thing, um, you know, um, um, you know, since we're talking about human relations and reconciliation, one of the cool things that I found this week is that there was an article um, that is doing a sightseeing tour um, throughout the Pine Bluff area. And St. James was very instrumental, um, instrumental in um, the civil rights movement. Um, and so in honor of the King holiday, they've created this like sightseeing tour where there are different stops throughout Pine Bluff. Um, UAPB happens to be one of them because that's where uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King spoke for commencement um, one year. Um, and also during that time period, um, it was not UAPB, but it was actually Arkansas Agricultural Mechanics um, School, AM&N. And, &N. Um, and so um, my family is very proud of of that heritage of being uh, alums of um, AM&N, &E um, now UAPB. And so um, St. James was listed as well as the university. And so there is a lot of excitement. And I don't know if a lot of people know about that sightseeing tour or not, but um, I'm, I'm proud um, that my church has been listed for that. It's not the original location of St. James, but um, the original building had been bombed because of the movement that people were doing um, to kind of honor and uplift um, equality within that community. And the fight still goes on. Uh, we know that it's, it's, once again, out of chaos comes order, comes community. And so um, we are still building on that community for 
um, a better day, a better tomorrow, a better future for everyone in that county as well. Well, that is, uh, thank you so much for sharing that piece of uh, history and maybe uh, in sharing that, this may be an opportunity I, that even after the weekend is over and over Monday, uh, maybe some people may be able to go and be able to witness that um, together. So again, I love you and thank you so much uh, for for this idea of, of saying yes to this pulpit swap. And um, I know that both congregations will be blessed. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. <laughs> yes, yes. So let's close with a word of prayer. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for the beautiful creation that you have made. We pray, Almighty God, that you will help this one Sunday become a daily movement where we work to have greater relations as a part of your creation, that we will see one another and love one another just as you love us. Amen. Amen. Amen.